Uh, big news today, NBA. NBA jump back. Uh, Shams reported it. There was a big meeting, um, like a telephone call or, or whatever it was. And basically, they have kind of set the timetable. Now, they haven't set exact dates, but they've got, you know, the, the roundabout, right? Exactly when they're going to do things. And what they've decided is they're going to do in-market training camps in early July. So teams will be in Memphis. Um, hey, hold on. Michael said, I'd be more interested in, uh, in him being the GM for Denver, but he'll be great at whatever he does. Talking about Manning. I can believe that. I think he's going to be good at everything. I, I wouldn't want him to be a GM. That's a, he'd sign up with offensive players. <laughs> well, no, it's just he, no, he, I'm playing, I'm playing. you can't be engaging. You can't be entertaining. You can't, you can't talk to people. He is the most entertaining sports figure that we have in retirement in the history of, of sports. Yeah. No, he just you is. want him to be able to talk, period. And as long as he works for a team, he's, he's going to have to stay quiet about everything. You'll never get his true opinion about anything. True. And you will lose all his personality. Yeah. All his value will be gone. Yeah, I don't think I like that idea. No. Um, all right, so the NBA timetable, back to that. In-market training camp in July. So, like, the Grizzlies will have a training camp in Memphis in July. Orlando will have a training camp in Orlando. The Knicks will have a training camp in New York and blah, 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 blah. Then you move down to Orlando and you do scrimmages, right? So you've got, like, your your camp down there and you scrimmage against other teams. And then starting in late July or early August, they will, quote, return to play or resume play. Now, they did not specify yet. They've got another call on Friday. They didn't specify if resume play or return to play means we're just going to fire the season back up and roll it as we as we go, or if they're going straight to the playoffs, or if they're doing a, a play-in kind of tournament thing, or if they they haven't explained any of that. So that's what we're looking forward to, but we do have at least a timetable of when the NBA is going to come back. Now, I am curious your thoughts on this because... Before you will be able to watch an NBA basketball game, or at this point, a Major League Baseball game, or possibly even NHL, who knows, because we don't have a set timetable for that either, you're going to be able to go to theme parks. You're going to be able to go and do just about anything other than watch sports on television. How do you feel about that? I think some of these leagues have... This is my opinion. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not responsible for any of this, and I also am not responsible for listening to the players of my league. I think they've waited too long to put these plans into place. I agree. Disney is going to open up, and 20,000 people are going to man that stadium, that, that that park. They're just going to flock in as many as they'll let. Yeah. Okay? And that's just it. And, and what they don't let in, there's going to be – just droves of people outside waiting for somebody to walk out so they can walk in. Yes. Okay. That, that is, that is going to happen. And you have a team of about in the NBA's perspective, 20 people total coaches and players. And you can't get those guys together. That's, that's what drives me nuts is you're, you're waiting too long. If you start in August, like NBA. I know all the social distancing stuff says groups of 10, but what's the difference between the group of 10 and the group of 20 if all of you are being mandated by your employer, I add, to social distance and quarantine? And, be, and, and quarantine and be tested when you get yes. there and all like, that. Like, I don't, I just think that, I just think that these guys have missed an opportunity to take over and own the summer. And yes. also, if these parks are opening up, and they're going to let tens of thousands of people in, then there's no reason to not let people in attendance to these games either. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I mean, what, what is the reason behind, so we can have 20,000 deep at Disney World and, 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 and Universal, but you won't let 5,000 people come watch a basketball game or a hockey game? Like, I don't get it. I, I'm not even concerned about I don't get the about, math on that. Well, That's all. Like I'm, I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not concerned about the crowds. Shit. Like, have it with no fans. That's perfectly fine. What I'm trying to figure out is why would you wait until August to play a game with no fans yeah. in the stands? Yeah. Because then I, don't, you're, I don't understand that. You weird. waited too long to even start working out. 
Yes. They should have been working out a long time ago because or, or they're much smaller, especially the what's NBA. What's stopping them from doing it like in the next two weeks? Yeah. Like, I, I that's know. what I don't get. Nothing. Like, nothing. It, it's just. Why are we waiting until July to and that's start it. working out? Michael jumps in on Twitch. He said, how are they going to compete with football if they wait that long? They're not. Oh, they're just going to have nothing. to. They're going to compete. They are going to compete with football. Yeah, they're going to compete, but nothing gonna competes with football. Football trumps everything. That's right. They're going to make sure their games aren't on Sundays. And if and if college football is not going, they're going to not have games on Saturdays anymore either. Guess what? I mean, it's it's Or they're going to have early games or late games. They're going to find like a weird window of time where there's not a game going on. It's, if you've ever gone back and looked at the ratings, you know, if – NBA, like when the NBA starts in October and shitty Thursday November. night football games against the Titans and the Jags get NBA finals numbers. Yes. He said, or Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. I mean, that's well, no, you can play all day Monday. You just can't play Monday night. Yeah. You can play all day Thursday. You just can't play Thursday night. You better start at noon. And then, of course, if you're, if you're still running it whenever they start the, uh, the Tuesday night games and, you know, the yeah. middle of October and whatnot. No, I mean, they, they won't care about college football. I'm just saying, there's going to be... They won't care about college football. I understand that they won't care about it, but what I'm saying is they are going to still get beat by games between Akron and, no, and Ohio. Won't. No, they won't. No, they won't. If, if we, they're playoff games by then, they won't. That it, that they won't do. College football okay. games on Tuesday nights do not trump NBA playoff games. They just don't. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, okay, maybe not NBA playoff They games. go up against right. them right now during the regular season. They start in, in October. And and we got those Tuesday night games in October, you know, the whole month and in November. And the NBA regular season does better than those games. So, it's fine. I <laughs> Ben said, yes, everyone loves Akron and Ohio. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Ben said, only if Pat's in the booth. Yeah, I want Pat McAfee in the booth for Monday Night Football. I don't think it's going to happen. They don't want that risk. But, uh, but I'll tell you this, it'd be significantly more entertaining than it has been. For the love of God. Get McAfee in the booth. All I don't right. want somebody to just be entertaining. I want him to just call the game. That's all I want. Well, I think I don't that's want a the thing. Mac- show in the like, booth. McAfee knows you football. and I. You and I see McAfee totally different. I see McAfee as a side show. He's a comedy act, and he's great at what he does. But I don't want shtick on my Monday Night Football. I would like a professional crew. It shouldn't be that damn hard to find a professional crew. Yeah, I mean they want a name though, don't they? Like, that- but that's stupid. This is the problem that we keep getting into anyway, is they keep trying to force a name on people, and people with names aren't good. You know the best guy that I have heard call NFL games that's not Tony Romo or Chris Collinsworth is Nate Burleson. But nobody wants, nobody gives a shit about Nate Burleson. He was a mediocre receiver in Detroit 80% of his life. No one cares. Huh. But he's really good at it. Okay. Okay, I can He's buy really that. good, but See, nobody cares because he doesn't have a name. That's the problem. Why don't we they just want a name? About the they name. don't want somebody who's good at their job. Why don't we just build a name? Like that's what ESPN needs to be looking at. Like, but that, that's we... it. Yeah, find some find some kid that's good. Find some player that's really good. Find somebody that's good at it. Give them the job, and guess what? Ratings will come. They will then get a name. You'll get them on the cheap for the first couple of years, and then they'll demand to get paid a whole lot because they become a star. Uh, ben said Pat would be good with a uh, good analyst and a play-by-play guy. Uh, Michael said the NBA should have taken advantage of people craving live sports with nothing else to do. They missed that window. That's a terribly run league. Uh, I, I told our group chat today, like, the problem that we've got right now, why we don't have a set plan, why we don't have whatever, is because Adam Silver is, like, everybody, dis- like, they. I'll, I'll tell you this. I love Roger Goodell for this and this alone. Like, he gets everybody on the same page. And they go forward with a plan. Adam Silver doesn't have a plan. He has no Adam idea. Adam Silver's not a living, breathing commissioner. Adam no, Silver, he's, he's has not a his, leader. He literally has LeBron James's hand up his rectum, and he's just a puppet for whatever the stars want to do. Yes, he gets on the phone with five best players in the league and says, "What do you guys want?" And if they can't come up with an idea, he takes the bullets, and that's it. He he. It's not he's a player's g. Uh, you know. Commissioner, commissioner or whatever, or an owner's commissioner. He's a nobody's commissioner. What does LeBron want? That's all he does. That's it. That's the list. He's not a live thing. He's Uncle I think Bernie. He, I think he appeases the owners as well because he, he listens to the owners. He listens to the players. 
I think if he listened to the owners that have played a long time ago. You think so? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Michael said Adam Silver is always concerned with what the media is going to say. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you this. The media But who say controls anything. the media in sports? I don't say know. Say one direction. negative thing about LeBron. Instantly, oh. boom, access is cut off. You never get another highlight the rest of your life. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. I didn't know which direction you were going with that. But, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's uh, it's bonkers. It's crazy. I don't like it, but whatever. Tell them to go to work. Yeah. Quit yeah. asking questions. Quit asking people what they want to do. Find out what's safe. Put a plan together. Mitigate the risk the best you can and tell them to go to work. And if they choose to not, that's fine. And if you have to play this thing out without them, that's fine. But some of them will show up and somebody's going to get kind of champion. And then they're going to wave that yeah. ring in that dude's face the next six months. Somebody will play and somebody will be on TV in front of massive, massive, massive numbers. numbers. Yeah. I mean, you saw it. Uh, Fletcher said, I Gary, sh- ask Chris how he's planning on affording Tom Brady's $300,000 Cadillac that he just put up for sale. No, no, I'm not buying that. No, I don't have that. I, I'm not a big memorabilia guy. 80% of the memorabilia I got was gifted to me. So if somebody wants to give it to me, I probably couldn't afford the taxes on it. But <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael said, great show, fellas. Headed to Denver tomorrow. I'll jump in if I got a chance. Hey, yeah, yeah. Tell us what's up. He said, giggle. Be safe. Ben said uh, they had two other guys with Pat for the uh, Akron versus Ohio games on Tuesday nights, and it was very good. We uh we actually did an interview with uh Adam Amin. We we got to Amin. See, that's the thing. Yeah, McAfee's he, he really, had a good. really good guy. That team was unbelievable because I think Hasselback is great. I would Hasselback already does more NFL than college stuff anyway. Yep. I would still has he's a he's a former, but he's not a big star name. He is unbelievable though. That Thursday night crew very was good. really good. I mean, we got to yeah. we sat and I would talked take, with Amin. I would take a meme in him in minutes. a heartbeat. And then and McAfee, I mean, we we sat and talked with him in a hotel lobby for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever. And all of them know their stuff, and they're really personable, no, really energetic. No, it's not that Pat doesn't know his you know. thing. Pat has a shtick that he's never going to get out of. Yeah. And that's fine. That's fine. He's always going to be the goofball, and he's always going to be the wild man. And that's okay, and that has its place. I don't want that on my Monday night crew. I just, I just don't. I want a grown up in the booth. I bet that's my opinion. I'm an old man, and I want somebody to call the game. That's all I want. Yeah, you don't, don't make want it about stick. you. You had enough Gruden. Call the game. Yeah, you had enough Gruden. You don't need that. Yes, yes. John Gruden made the entire telecast about John Gruden. Yeah. I don't want that. He had the number one guy next to him in Mike Tarico for a long time, and he cocked it up. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You are right. All right. We've gone 45 minutes. I think we're uh, I think we're good for today. Is there anything else that's popped up that uh, that you think we need to hit? No, not that I've seen. There was something that hit early this morning, and I was driving, and I was like, I need to remember that. As soon as I got stopped, I went to find that article, and now I couldn't even tell you what it's about. I mean, I, I don't even know what sport it covered. That's so, a, see, I'm I'm looking. I don't. I it's don't gone. See you. It's gone. I don't know what. I might have dreamed it while I was driving. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> Well, I, I saw this uh, the Fabian Lovett article about him committing to Ole Miss, and then it was gone. I, was, I knew it wasn't that. And then it was gone. It just disappeared. Uh, I mean, we, we could have talked about Musa Cisse reclassifying oh, to the you class know what? of 2020. That, there's a chance it might have been that. I mean, that, that happened early this morning. Musa Cisse, uh, 2021 top 10 player, uh, plays at Lausanne in Memphis. Uh, he's going to announce, like, I think his top five is, like, Georgetown, Kentucky, Memphis, Something, something, something. Didn't Texas Tech on there? Maybe. Uh, Mac McClung uh, committed to Texas Tech today, so that may be where you're getting at. Um, oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's so, it. But, uh, but Musa C. Fletcher's little brother was, was following that on Twitter. That was my my way around following that. Yeah. Just following Scott. So we're, we're just trying to figure out what's going to happen with, uh, with Musa C. Say and whatnot. Now, it wasn't a massive story, but definitely interesting in the city of Memphis as he is a Memphis City kid. And uh, or at least he plays here. I mean, he just moved here last year. Um, and it looks like uh, looks like he likely will play for uh, for the Tigers, but we'll see. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys know what to do. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you are subscribed on all of our live platforms as well as our podcast feed. Uh, today's show, obviously, you missed about three minutes because uh, because our our live streaming thing is having issues today for whatever reason they can't connect to YouTube they dropped off a of Facebook for whatever reason I mean it just a 
just a disaster. So, uh, so go get the podcast because that one is always going to be there. You ain't ever got to worry about nothing. We recorded that separately through uh, through our little audio interface over here. I'll have that up in uh, in about yeah twenty minutes or so, and uh, and you can grab that. So, subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you leave a nice review. Make sure you subscribe to all the live feeds so you can jump in on the chat with us. We would definitely appreciate that. Share the show out. Tell your friends about it. Go to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gaming destination, is open. They are rocking and rolling. All six sports books are ready to take your bet. And we got sports going on. We got PGA Tour. We got NASCAR. We got all kind of stuff going on. So if you want to go toss a few dollars down, you can do that now in person in Tunica, Mississippi. Tunicatravel.com is the website Everybody, make sure that you take care of yourself. Take care of each other, and we'll be back again same time tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.